Hello, I am Ruvald, and this video seeks to answer one single question. Is there character objectification in Double Dragon? Uh, this is a follow-up to Anita Sarkeesian and Feminist Frequencies Tropes vs. Women Part 1, Damsel in Distress, a video in which she references Double Dragon. And uh, the video has been out, there's been some backlash, there's been some debate, uh, so I thought I would isolate Double Dragon and answer that particular question. I will try to be as brief and concise as possible because your time is precious and so is mine, so let's get started. Um, as far as criteria, I will be using Martha Nussbaum's criteria to define objectification. She is a well-known feminist and I think her criteria uh, make sense. Let's uh, list them quickly. We have instrumentality, denial of autonomy, inertness, ownership, fungibility, I had to look that one up, uh, violability, and denial of subjectivity. I'll go back to all of them as we go along. I will score all criterias uh, by gender in the following manner. Uh, zero point, the criteria is not met. One point, the criteria is met to a lesser extent, which I would consider open to debate, or maybe uh, jury still out and all of that. And two points for criteria is met beyond reasonable doubt. Uh, I will score each criteria twice. Uh, one, within the context of the narrative, which is how male protagonists perceive female protagonists and vice versa, and outside the context of the narrative, which is how the game perceives the protagonists, male or female. I think there's been a lot of points and counterpoints that seems to mix up the, uh, the objectification that takes place within the narrative and outside the narrative. So I'll try to uh, separate them to get a clearer picture. Uh, in this presentation, I know it won't uh, have unanimous support, but the protagonist in this scope is a character in the game that we root for or are expected to feel an emotional attachment to, i.e. the two male brawlers and the damsel in distress. Number one, instrumentality. If the thing is treated as a tool for one's own purpose. First, the brawlers as perceived by the damsel. Well, the damsel is without question using the brawlers as tool for her own purpose of escaping her kidnappers. So, two points. The damsel as perceived by the brawlers. Well, the damsel doesn't serve any purpose to the brawlers who are risking life and limb to serve her own purpose, her purpose being freedom. The game versus brawlers. Well, the game uses the brawlers as tools to serve its own purpose and dehumanizes them completely for its sake, uh, because the brawlers are basically what the player controls. The game versus the damsel. Well, the damsel. The game uses the damsel as a tool to serve its own purpose and dehumanizes her completely for its sake. Uh, the, saving the damsel is an objective, so that's the excuse to get the game going. Number two, denial of autonomy and inertness. If the thing is treated as if lacking in agency or self-determination. Uh, the brawlers as perceived by the damsel. Well, the damsel most likely assumed that brawlers will come and save her, making them all but inert. So no point, brawlers seen is not seen as without agency. Uh, the damsel as perceived by the brawler, well, the, da the damsel is assumed incapable of escaping on her own, so she's perceived as having no agency and no power. Two points. Game versus brawlers. Brawlers are seen as incapable of anything but brawling. They have no control over their own destiny beyond fight or die. They can't, for example, just go home, watch TV, have a snack, and all of that. So the game kind of takes away a lot of agency from the brawlers. Now, of course, that can be said of any video games, but it's still the case. Uh, game versus Damsel. Well, Damsel is a prisoner. She has no agency whatsoever. Two points. Ownership. If the thing is treated as if owned by another. Well, Brawler is perceived by the damsel. I gave it one point, and I'm open to debate on that. Uh, I won't go into detail right now, but the very disturbing ending to that game, um, which I'll come back to in fungibility, uh, led me to give it a point. We'll go. We'll get back to this one. Uh, damsel is perceived by the brawlers. Well, absolutely not. Um, 
they don't pers- they don't it's not established in the narrative that they are owning her in any way shape or form uh, no one owns her uh, there is no ownership issue here well brawlers are thing owned by the player so game versus brawler two points uh, damsel is a prisoner her inertness could be construed as being owned by her kidnappers so one point uh, one point uh, from the game, not from the brawlers. Fungibility. This is where the game gets interesting. If the thing is treated as if interchangeable. Brawlers as perceived by the damsel. Well, the very disturbing ending of this game makes this one beyond debate. When the damsel is rescued by the two brawlers, she forces the two, the two of them to fight to the death to see who gets to be with her. So... Basically, one, the other, she doesn't really care as long as there's only one left. So if that's not the very, by the definition, the complete definition of interchangeability, I really don't know what is. Uh, The damsel is unique as the brawlers seek to save her and only her. Uh, The brawlers do not see her as being replaceable. They want her. As far as how the game sees things, well, the fact that the two brawlers are beyond the color of their clothes, completely clones of one another, this one's pretty easy to call. Uh, the brawlers are completely interchangeable, two points. Uh, the damsel, well, damsel is not built up to have any unique attribute that would make her hard to replace. Uh, any other uh, woman could be just cut and pasted in her place. She has no... Uh, personality for say um, she's rather not that unique and very replaceable by from the game's perspective so two points violability if the thing is treated as if permissible to damage or destroy uh, brawlers as perceived by the damsel well brawlers can very well be damaged or destroyed to serve the damsel she even encourages it at the very end so brawlers yeah very very much viable damsel is perceived by the brawlers well brawlers will not tolerate damage or destruction on the damsel and will spring into action if she comes to be harmed which is what happens at the beginning of the game Uh, so the brawlers are really not objectifying the damsel Uh, game versus brawlers well We are made to care about the brawlers being damaged or destroyed, but only within the concept of the context of winning the game, not within a context that we actually care about these guys. Uh, No effort is made to define them. They're very one-dimensional. They don't have any personality or hobbies or interests or political views that would make us like them and care about them. We want them to stay alive because that's the whole point of the game. Uh... The damsel's initial damage, a single punch to the stomach, is part of the narrative, but triggers the reaction of the brawlers. Uh, The narrative kind of allows this damage, but it is a statement of wrong. It is wrong, the damage that is caused to her. It is what creates the reaction. So, one point. Um, Number six, denial of subjectivity. If the thing is treated as if there is no need to show concern for the object's feelings and experiences, well... The damsel doesn't really give a damn about the brawler's pain. In fact, like I said it before, she encourages them to beat each other to death at the end. So, anyone damsel cares about the brawlers? Not really. Uh, Damsel is perceived by the brawler, on on the other hand. Well, they care a great deal about the damsel experiences and feeling. They're doing everything they do in order to improve her condition that is being a kidnapped prisoner. Uh, now, how about the game? How does the game feel about the brawlers? Well, the brawlers are kind of expected to get repeatedly beaten up and have little to say in the matter, so their feelings, eh, you know, we can we can do without them. And the damsel, well, pretty much the same thing. She's doing, she's being uh, used and her depth and emotions are not really taken into account so object right there time to tally up is 
is there objectification in Double Dragon? Well, there's a lot of it. Out of 48 potential points, Double Dragon scores a 33. So it's not exactly a game that's going to make you cry about their characters because you feel emotional attachment to them. They're pretty much one-dimensional uh, creatures that exist for the sole purpose of making the game. Now, let's see how the damsel scores. The damsel scores very, very low as perceived by the brawlers. The brawlers actually genuinely care about the damsel. The brawlers basically could do anything but get the crap beaten out of them. They could go home, uh, play some video games on their own, or watch sport or whatnot, but they don't. They sacrifice themselves for her. So she scores very low as perceived by the brawlers. As perceived by the game, however, well, she is an object. No depth, no personality, nothing. She's just here as a tool for the game to go on. Uh, her overall objectification, based on that, is sort of an average. 13 out of a potential 24. Now, when we reach the brawlers, we realize that even within the narrative, the brawlers are being very heavily objectified by the, da the damsel, who doesn't really care about them. Their pain, their damage, their sacrifice. She's, she's really just sitting there waiting for, for them and then telling them to kill each other. So the brawlers, ugh, they don't, they don't get, they're not really on the right side of this fence uh, as far as objectification go. And as perceived by the game, we have actually gender parity. This means that the game is objectifying the brawlers to the same extent as the damsel. They are not complete human beings. We do not care about them. They are merely tools to make the game exist and move forward. Uh, but overall, the brawlers get the short end of the stick, uh, mainly because of how they are treated within the narrative. Um, I'll let you draw your own conclusions, uh, but you know, I thought it would be interesting to simply evaluate the cr criteria um, against both the male and free female uh, characters in this game and sort of make a tally and that's what i've done so thank you for watching please comment you know write your own conclusions below uh let's talk it out um so have a great day